everyone, it's TTL back with another video for you and today we are going to be taking a look at the Power Color RX 6600. This is the card that AMD has had sent to me so that I can do a 6600 review though because we are having a new card launch but they're going to be vendor cards only meaning you're not going to see any generic AMD ones or at least that's what I've been led to believe. Now one of the things I do want to kind of uh, get across right from the get-go is we are still experiencing shortages. And I know you're all bored of hearing it and some of you are going to click off, but I would say stop. And I'll also kind of say like, like and comment and all of that stuff because I do forget to say it. But things are quite difficult. Also, a lot of the samples are going to be getting flown into countries. So in the UK, if you do manage to find a MSRP card, you're going to be getting one for under £300 or around that kind of price. Uh, because if they get flown in, that's extra cost, you know, bringing them into the country. And the market at the moment is kind of difficult. But £300 graphics card. Now, I'm not going to kind of look back to a card that was launched 18 months ago before COVID and all of that kind of stuff because things are totally different. We're in a completely different kind of economic world now. So I'm going to focus on the fact that this is £300 and the sort of numbers it can spring out. Now, it compared to the XT, it does have a slightly lower clock. You can see by the thing up, it's over 300 megahertz down on clock. You've got a few less stream press processors. There's four less ray accelerators. There are four less compute units as well. Uh, boost clock is just below 1500, sorry, 2500, whereas the XT is just over 2500. Now, you would think that this would make a massive amount of difference, and in reality, it has, but not as much as I would have thought. Now, one of the things I do want to say uh, very early on is if you are and buying an AMD card because the games that you seem to play are more AMD focused, have had the AMD support, had the AMD stuff kind of coded in, like Far Cry 6, which has just been released, you'll be happy to know that this little card actually does do really well. Now, Far Cry 6 is one of the games that I will say the um, 6600 can and if you're able to at home, could be played at 1440p, which is why you can see two up on the screen right now. Now, we've got two up. Now, this is run with the game maxed out. This is with it all on ultra. It's all kind of nice. But then if I move on to the next one, which is with FXR and DXR enabled. Sorry, yeah, no FSR. So DXR for ray tracing and then FSR for the screen upscaling. And we've got that on quality mode as well. Again, you can see the two 1440 and um, 1080p, the card is more than able to run it. And this is a card that is um, kind of pitched at a 1080p screen. But one of the things you do need to remember is we've shown you that it can do 1440, yet we are running it at ultra. So you could, even if you wanted to, turn a few things back to high and get the frame rate even higher. Or if you're on a very high refresh rate, 1080p screen, you could do the same for that. Now, for a bit of balance, because let's face facts, I have just shown you two AMD games. Now I'm gonna show you two Nvidia games and we're gonna start with Cyberpunk. Now Cyberpunk, you see there's only one screen up and that's because that's 1080p and if you look at the frames per second you'll understand why you're not going to get 1440p out of it i would actually personally say with a game like cyberpunk you're going to want to back off from ultra a little bit and go down into those settings and turn some things back to high to be able to get your frame rate up so that you can comfortably play with a 6600. it is a similar story if we move on to Metro. Metro, again, very, very NVIDIA focused game, but because it's the newer version of the Metro as well, it is the one with ray tracing and you cannot turn it off. So it's a proper, proper resource hog, yet, as you can see, it does quite well. But you do need to remember we have got this turned right up as well. So if you went in and turned a few of the things back down to high, you could get that frame rate 
up a little bit more. Now it's a waste of time you're going in and spending like hours and hours and hours going through settings and stuff because there's always going to be a game I'm going to miss. So I'm just going to put it under an, a broad envelope in that if you wanted to make some changes you can get some good frames per second out of it. So my thoughts on the card for two, uh, 299 or around the £300 mark. We'll go with this one but we'll kind of call it the shots as a whole because this one it did look basic but it's been built to try and meet a price point and obviously shipping and distributors and e-tailers are all going to play a part of it but the the kind of the essence is there to start with it's all going to depend on your country your location whether they've been able to get them it kind of makes my life quite difficult but for around the £300 mark, I think it actually does quite well. It was cool, it was calm, it was collected, it didn't use a lot of power. Uh, the temperatures were well below 70 degrees. All of this data is available on the OC3D website where the full review is. You can like, you can comment, but there's loads more over there. We did loads more games as well. I'm just trying to keep this video kind of uh, short, sharp and to the point. 1080p, yes. Very, very stressful, or what I will call triple A titles, or the other way around. Uh, you will need to turn some things back from ultra down to high to get your frame rate kind of up there. But if you're looking at one of the games where it's a little bit more AMD focused or isn't quite as stressful, like as I've said, Far Cry 6 or something like Dirt or F1 2020, then you're easily going to get decent frame rates at 1080p. And I would say you're going to have healthy frame rates at 1440 as well. And with a few minor tweaks, you can even uh, take those 1440 frames and get a little bit more out of them with some careful um, uh, changes. So, £300, it will be great. Let's hope the miners don't abuse it and buy them up in their drones because obviously that's the bane of all of our existences at the moment. But for a reasonable £300 uh, card for a budget-based system, I think it's a little bit of a cracker. And like I said, I am basing it based on the fact that I went on to the e-tailers today to look what was available and if nothing else, it's actually going to be nice that there is going to be a, a surge of new cards coming in. So that's got to be good for gamers in the sense that if you want a graphics card or you're eagerly awaiting the chance to be able to build a new rig, you're going to get a window of opportunity with some new products on the way. You can take what I've said with a pinch of salt. We can also discuss it in the comments underneath because I always keep an eye and I always do like to discuss points. Uh, those of you out there that are going to say it's wrong, I'm not going to disagree with you. I'm just saying that there is another point of view that you can take a look at it if you want to try and keep things upbeat a little bit more. But for now at least, this has been the tiniest one with another video for you. Out. Thank <laughs> you.